Hello guys, good morning all. Uh, so let's uh, uh, start the session uh, for understanding Azure Site Recovery. Uh, my name is Shoaib and I'm a pre-sales consultant for, for Reading and Gulf. Uh, and uh, so, so let's get started. So uh, in this session, <coughs> I mean, uh, the reason why we chose uh, Site Recovery because as we are doing a continuous webinar, so we are trying to cover one uh, specific uh, subject on each session a specific solution on each session and we also wanted to make sure that uh, you know uh, it should be very relevant uh, looking at the current situation and and the current market standards site recovery is something which has been uh, used i mean it, it's a most used solution in azure and and every customer needs a site recovery so let's get started so uh, so okay so what as per the expectation i mean you know we have this webinar for an hour or maybe less than that we i wanted to make sure that you know uh, i have a demo ready across but you know it would have been a really hectic task and and actually at least a full day session to show you the failover and fail back from hyper v to azure vmware to azure and physical server to azure uh, with the rpos with the rtos with the configuration and when we do a replication it takes an immense amount of time to replicate and then fail back so what i did was uh, uh we we covered uh, i mean you know uh, everything in a snapshot of course i will be giving you a complete uh, look and feel around it but you know i i covered it as a snapshot and i pasted the snapshot in the chat window uh, anyone you know who's interested in a complete demo we can do a demo i can set up the I, I can send them the guides and other things so what we're gonna cover in this session was an overview of azure site recovery then we will jump into replicating hyper v vms to azure then we will do a replication between azure virtual machines from one region to another region <laughs> Uh, I mean, a uh, few of them might have a question that if my virtual machines are on Azure, why would I do a replication? So team, as we know, you know, uh, uh, I mean, of course, if, even if your virtual machines are on Azure, it's an end customer's responsibility to take care of the virtual machines. I mean, any, any uh, level of uh, control the customer have, I mean, in infrastructure as a service, the customer have a control for the virtual machine, for the OS, for the databases. So it's his responsibility to own it and to manage it. So if your virtual machines are on Azure, of course, Microsoft gives you a set of SLAs, but it doesn't mean that it is Microsoft responsibility completely to, to, to take care of the virtual machines high availability. That's why it is very important to consider that if you are putting any virtual machines on Azure, uh, you need to make sure that uh, if you if it's highly important machine you take a DR for the virtual machine. So we will cover replicating an Azure virtual machines between one region to another. Then uh, replicating VMware machines to Azure and physical servers. Why we are doing it different for all because there's a different process engaged in, in all of them. So let's get started. so site recovery what is site recovery let's let's spend some time around it i mean everyone knows and and you know what is what is a dr what is an important of dr what are the consequences of dr but you know very few customers they amend to it and there are multiple reasons behind that so many times when i speak to a customer that do you have a dr uh, uh dr site ready he said yes we take a backup so it's very important for us to understand and and we all are technical people so we we know that you know uh, backup is not a dr then what is a dr dr is basically a, a business continuity solution and we can have it from multiple vendors and microsoft has its own uh, uh bcdr solution which is called as azure site recovery and why it is important and and for whom it is important let's let's take this question step by step <coughs> why it is important i mean imagine company like red indian 
uh, all the partners they come uh, to our portal called as cloudcox to load their orders and imagine our cloudcox port cloudcox portal is down for some some reason and the partners are not able to load the order what do i lose as reddington i lose two things i lose my business i lose the credibility and if this happen over a multiple period of time then you know we will have a very very bad end customer or a partner experience and especially you know as customers and partners most of the time we are in hurry we need to load our orders as soon as we can so so it is very important for reddington to make sure that our website is always up i mean but at the back end there are chances that the servers or the web app that i'm provisioning my website uh, would be down due to some reason but i need to make sure that if an environment is down i need to have another parallel environment which is up and running as a dr site uh i mean it, it goes for anyone imagine you're using youtube when youtube is going down every now and then we might we might switch our turn i mean if you're using google google is not responding or you're using bing bing is not responding any of the cases so site recovery is basically getting an exact replica of your infrastructure not the complete infrastructure of the most important workload so if anything happens to this site you can fail over and the traffic can go another site with no or least downtime <clears throat> that is available as the definition correctly says replicate your workload running on a physical or on virtual machine from a primary to a secondary location when an outage occurs on primary site you fail over to a secondary location and you can access your application and your machines there and after the primary location is up and running you can fill it fill it back i mean this is as simple as it can be then we have a backup service it's just like your back so <laughs> there are two scenarios uh with which we can take as a, a site recovery scenario one is your first diagram at the left you have physical servers you have vmware machines and you have hyper v machines currently only this three is supported i mean zen servers or, or nutanix or anything else is not supported as if for now then these three machines there are some services in between for orchestration and for replication and then we get azure site recovery uh, which is in the which is in azure this is the first situation and then uh, the second situation is we have virtual machines in north europe and we are replicating it to west europe for the dr purpose so let's get started uh, with with the situation one which is uh, replicating your on premises machine to azure so now uh, as we know uh, we have physical machines we have vmware and we have hyper v let's let's deep dive into this okay so first thing that we have in azure we have a service called as azure site recovery vault anyone and everyone basically should have an azure subscription now how to get an azure subscription guys a different topic but just give me an overview first of all if you are an end customer every end customer get a uh, 200 dollars credit as a trial for azure what do you need to do you need to go to any azure site or just bing azure uh, demo or azure free credits as a new customer you need to enter your email address you need to enter your credit card it is only for security purpose only 1 dollars will be deducted from your credit card and you will get a 200 dollars credit for free which we can use for one month okay once you get the azure subscription you search for recovery service vault uh maybe we in in a demo we will do a short demo how to create a recovery service vault depending upon <coughs> uh, the time permissions and other things i'm sorry okay so in recovery service vault what does it hold so recovery service vault is basically a service recovery service vault is a service which is used for backup and which is used for dr in azure which i will go in 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 details in a while when i show you the demo so all your settings all your site recovery plans your monitoring your reports your policies 
and protected items. What do I mean by protected items? Protected items are basically the virtual machine that you are protecting. Everything is stored in recovery service vault. So it is very, very important for us to understand what is recovery service vault and how recovery service vault work. I mean, we will go in detail in a while. So whenever, and we will do a lot of configuration and, and most of the configuration for Azure site recovery has been done uh, on the recovery service vault phase. <coughs> okay. Another important thing, uh, uh, and we will go in detail here as well. Now, I mean, imagine you have 10 virtual machines or 10 physical machines or 10 VMware machines and those machines are very important for you to use as a DR. But how do you configure a DR? What is going to be your costing? What network you're using and the network that you're using, does it support the bandwidth for replication? Because of course, when you use Azure as a site recovery, what bandwidth should I use? Uh, what should be my RTO? What should be my RPO? And what type of storage I'm using on premises? What type of storage I should use on cloud? You would have all these questions, correct? You might have a question that, you know, is my virtual machine supported or not supported for a DR? Because, you know, Azure Site Recovery has certain limitations for, for, for supportability as well. What is going to be the cost on Azure? So there are multiple things, you know, when you're doing a DR setup, there are a lot of things that comes in your mind and, you know, and, and you don't want to uh, end up in a mess. Yeah, like, you know, you configured a DR, uh, you did everything, you, you, you took a site recovery, you gave a business plan and later on we come to know that few of the machines are not supported or your bandwidth is not supported. So for this, there is a tool called as Azure Site Recovery Capacity Planner, also called as Deployment Planner. What this Deployment Planner does is, before we do a DR, and of course I will go through this as well at, uh, at some time in this session. What Deployment Planner does is, Deployment Planner, you will run the Deployment Planner. It's a command line tool that you will run in your on-premises environment. And once you run a Deployment Planner, it will give you an overview that you know, you need to do a few inputs as you see in, in, in the slide as you see here. And then you will run the deployment planner for maybe a few hours, few weeks or few days, depending upon your requirement. Why do I say that? Deployment planner will give you a report in an Excel that how many virtual machines they have we have accessed with the help of deployment planner. You will give the name of virtual machines in the network. How many of them are supported? How many of them are not supported? The reason why they are not supported, how much storage you need on Azure, what type of storage you need, is it a premium, I mean, is it an SSD or an HDD? What is gonna be the N estimate cost of Azure Site Recovery? And it will also give you the network bandwidth that is required and lot of things. So Deployment Planner is basically an assessment tool. It will assess, your on-premises Hyper-V or VMware or physical server as a bandwidth requirement, as a resource requirement, and an additional server requirement if there are required any. So it is absolutely important for you to run a deployment planner on your environment where you want to do a DR and check the complete compatibility, which we will check in a while. Okay, <laughs> so very, very important tool, guys, uh, to make a note of. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so before this, what I would do is, I will quickly share another screen uh, for a while where I would show you all the three things and then uh, we, will, we will go in details.
okay guys so uh, as you see that uh, my site recovery i'm not sure my uh, why the other recovery service vaults are not working so i have created the, a new recovery service vault which the deployment is under the way so till the time this deployment is is getting processed uh let me quickly okay my it's, it's already done so i'll go to the resource so see here in the site recovery you will say that either you want a backup or you want a replication so in our case i said we want a replication we don't want a backup and where you want to replicate i said my i want to replicate from my on premises and i want to take it uh, do you want to replicate or migrate so for migration as you know we use another tool called as azure migrator so we will not be using azure migrator we will be only using uh, uh, we will not be using azure migrator we uh, i mean for replication for repli uh, we will be using site recovery for replication so so our source is on premises okay something is going wrong here maybe my okay let me check hold on a second guys i think probably what's wrong i know that okay i go to something that i have here for replication on premises no so what i will go is i'll first of all go ahead and prepare an infrastructure in my on premises environment so these are multiple subscription that i'm toggling around and then uh, i did a demo rg here then i will uh, getting started i'll just do to site recovery and i'll go to prepare infrastructure on the prepare infrastructure tab i said machines are on premises i'm going to azure are you performing a migration no and here it asks that which environment you're using are you using a vmware a hyper v or others others means your physical servers so in any of the cases i said for example i said hyper v it, it will say that i using sc vmm the vmm to manage your hyper v on premises i said no okay guys i'm so sorry for some reason the screen was not uh, sharing so i'm so sorry and i saw your messages late so any which ways so okay i'll do this again i will go to my site recovery vault which is demo rg that we just created and i will go to protected items and i will go to replicate items and in replicate items okay so this is not okay so i'll go to site recovery i'll go to prepare infrastructure and in prepare infrastructure the very first thing it will say that where do you want to replicate do you want to replicate from on premises to azure or to azure to azure so currently we will say on premises to azure are you performing a migration for migration we have azure migrate so i'll say no i am performing a site recovery and it will say that which hypervisor you are using vmware hyper v or other other means physical so i said maybe hyper v and in hyper v it will ask me that are you using vmm the system center i said no okay because if you're using sc vmm then from the vmm only you can do the complete dr uh, tool and other things so i'll say no for now i'll say okay once i say okay if you remember we spoke about the deployment planner here is a tool where you can download the deployment planner okay so okay so once you download a deployment planner i will show you what happens what deployment planner will do I'll take another minute here to show you the deployment planner configuration. Just give me a minute, guys. Let me quickly show you the deployment planner, how uh, things look into deployment planner, because it is very important for you to understand. Okay, so I will share my screen again. I mean, it's a bit of a problem, guys, to, to switch over and switch back from the old screen to new screen. Anyways. I hope you are able to see my screen. So once we run a deployment planner, it will say in this case, for example, 
it will say that I have profiled 108 machines out of which 103 are 105 are compatible, three are not compatible. Desired RPU is 15 that we will put at the time of getting deployment planner. Network bandwidth, what type of storage? And at the bottom, it will give you what is going to be your DR cost. And if you see it's an Excel, it will give you your on premises summary, it will give you your storage placement, compatibility, and incompatible VM. So basically, deployment planner is a complete uh, setup, complete assessment that will help you to the an Azure site recovery assessment for your customers, for your environment. So let's get started with uh, Hyper-V, how to replicate your Hyper-V virtual machines to Azure. So what you need is on-premises, uh, okay, so I will, okay, I'll go back here. So your Hyper-V to Azure, this is your Hyper-V environment, you have virtual machine one, you have virtual machine two, then you have recovery service agent, you need a port of 443, okay, important thing to remember, Azure site recovery replication happens over the internet or over the express route. It will not happen over the VPN. So even if you don't have a VPN connection from on-premises to Azure, that's fine. But you need a VPN when you want to connect to a virtual machines. Imagine you are doing a DR for your domain, I mean, not for domain control, for your applications, for your SQL. I mean, your on-premises, I mean, your on-premises customer, if they want to connect to the virtual machines, you need a VPN. But imagine it's a DR for an application, whereas in the customer, they connect over the HTTP website, HTTPS website, 443, then in that case, you don't need a VPN altogether. So in our case, the on-premises component, you need a Hyper-V 2012 or 2012 or 2016. So the supported VMs is 2012 20, or 2016 for configuration and the site recovery that we just created. And in Azure side, you need a subscription, recovery vault, storage account, and network. Why do you need a storage account and network? So imagine after failover, no, not after failover, at the time of replication, when you are replicating your virtual machines to Azure, it needs to be in a storage account, correct? It There should be a storage account where your virtual machine is stored. See, okay, one more thing that I wanted to highlight here. When you're using an Azure site recovery, your virtual machines will only be created when you do a failover. So guys, when you're doing a, a, a failover, when you're doing, uh, guys, I'm so sorry, this is pretty finicky when it comes to screen sharing. So I think you are able, I, I, I hope you're able to see my screen now, correct? So this is where we started, Hyper-V to Hyper-V VMs to Azure. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes, perfect. Thanks, Mohan. So this is your Hyper-V environment. So, okay, very important point to consider. When you are replicating your on-premises virtual machine to Azure as a DR, while replicating, only storage is getting replicated and you only pay for storage. You don't pay for compute. Your virtual machines will only be created when you do a DR. Okay, let me tell it in a better way. Imagine we have three virtual machines on premises and we take it as a DR and each virtual machine has a storage of 500 GB each. When we choose an Azure site recovery, like in the Hyper-V environment, which I'll show in the other slides, when we choose an Azure site recovery, whatever storage is there, your C drive, your E drive, every storage will be replicating from on premises to Azure and only storage is getting charged. And there is an extra charge of $25 per virtual machine for a service of Azure Site Recovery. Your virtual machine compute is not being charged yet because the virtual machines are not started. Imagine you do a DR and once you do a DR from on-premises to Azure and you use the virtual machine on Azure for maybe 24 hours, 48 hours, any time, and you fail it over back to on-premises, then only 48 hours of compute you will pay. So in short, you will pay for the compute that you're using and storage is always chargeable because storage is already been paid. I mean, it, it's, it's only being used and there is a charge of $25 of Azure Site Recovery service from on-premises to Azure that you'll pay. So what are the steps of Hyper-V? We create a virtual network. Why we create a virtual network? We create a virtual network that once you fail over the virtual machines, 
which virtual network that virtual machine should be in what it's going to be the ip what is going to be the subnet which storage account recovery service vault as we said what is just protection goal we check that from hyper v to azure source environment target environment replication setting that we will do in a while okay so this is where it is so the very first thing you go to the site recovery vault you go to site recovery <laughs> you said prepare your infrastructure and prepare infrastructure you said on premises to azure hyper v sc vmm no that's what we did then it will ask you to enable replication so on premises and your source location dublin that's what we gave as a source location now very important thing guys in this slide it will okay so what i will do so imagine i ran a deployment planner and imagine uh, 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 we we created a, you know a virtual so once we ran a deployment planner a virtual machine has been created on your hyper v uh, so there are two types of one is agent less and one is agent based in the agent list a virtual machine will be created in your azure uh, in your hyper v environment and that will be on the same host where you want a dr and once you deploy that it will browse all the virtual machine that you have on this host so in this case these are the list of virtual machines that was available on my host so my azure site recovery will ask which all virtual machine you want to do a dr for and we will we can do it for all machines and we can do it for because remember the more virtual machines you select the storage will start replicating and there will be a storage cost on azure and there will be a 25 dollars per virtual machine cost on azure for site recovery for third for first one month it's free for first 31 days the site recovery charge is free but from next month onwards the site recovery charge will start building up so imagine it will retrieve the data you selected this machine is important for me okay no problem now once you select the virtual machines once you go to the guest os you will start the replication and then your azure hyper v replication to azure will start and initially there will only be a replication of your on premises hyper v environment and there will be one way replication from on premises to hyper v and in this one way replication all the data that you have on premises will be a continuous replication it will go 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 after one way full replication is done then you can specify what is going to be your rpo and rto then you specify the replication setting after full replication uh, your rpo rto should be for example 15 minutes every 15 minutes it should replicate every 5 minutes it should replicate and based on the settings and another important let me tell you one thing before we proceed so imagine you configured okay imagine you have an on premises environment and imagine you have uh, azure and now uh, imagine you have a replication every 15 minutes you have a, a recovery point every 15 minutes Oh, so imagine it's on 12 it's on 12 15 it's on 12 30. so there are three types of failover in azure one is test failover one is planned failover one is unplanned failover in test failover only <laughs> in test failover nothing on premises will run as it is you will only do a test on azure which is very good it, it is recommended to do a test maybe every 15 days or every one month or every week in that matter of fact and once you do a test failover it will only check that everything on azure is working fine no on premises environment is affected your azure environment will be isolated and will do a test then second type of failover is planned failover planned failover when we do planned failover we do a planned failover imagine in case of updates i want to update my on premises machine in this case i want to update my 2016 server but I don't want a downtime. So as an update leads a, needs a reboot and, and at the time of update, I'll do the testing and everything, I will do a failover. So imagine you're doing a, a planned failover at 12.10, although your recovery point is 12 and 12.15, and then there is no data between 12 to 12.10, but as it's a planned failover, it will go and check your on-premises. Are there any changes between 12 and 12.10? And it will take the changes and then we'll fail over. And after failover, your on-premises virtual machine is shut down automatically. And then there is unplanned failover in case of disaster, in case of hardware failure. In that time, if you're doing a failover between 12 and 12.10, then 
the last recovery point is 12:10, and the data will be lost of lost last 10 minutes data will be lost many of the customers they ask me that is it an automatic failover no it is not an automatic failover you need to manually fail over between on premises to azure because azure doesn't know okay there is a question in in the bin uh, that how and where we choose the agent for on premises vm discovery so once we go later so once okay so i will cover it in the slide in the session so but any which ways once we cover the prepare infrastructure part which we will do it in a while in prepare infrastructure part once we choose uh, uh, from on premises to azure we choose hyper v we choose uh, 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 without scvmm and we we done with deployment planner next to that slide it will be an agent it will be a point where where it will ask you to download an agent which we will check in a while we will we will go back to once we are done with this we will go back to a demo part and we will show you where you check it so guys uh, are, are things clear so far if there is no comment then i will consider yes and then we'll proceed perfect no problem let's proceed then uh, site recovery between azure virtual machines from one region to another region it is pretty straightforward it is like from one region to another region what you need to do from azure virtual machine we need to select applications or vm select the target select the replication setting and you are set we will do it in the while for this as well we will do a demo guys demo for everyone because you know as there is some uh, a problem between sharing so i don't want to stop sharing between this once this is done i will share my complete screen again and then we will do a demo across all so this is a, a snapshot of replicating between azure regions you will do a select region source and source resource group and then uh, select your environment so once this is selected which is fine then we will select the, the machine which machine you want to replicate so in which is in azure so I have a server 2012 US and then I will select the policies. What are the policies and I'll enable replication and my DR VM and, and in, okay. So, you know, you remember when we were talking about the failover. So there are types of failover. So this is test failover that we can see here. And in the failover part, we have planned and unplanned failover. And same way it goes to VMware and physical servers. So VMware and physical servers are pretty much the same. So for a VMware and physical environment, so on top, I will hide this if you are able to see this. Okay. So your source VMware environment, then uh, there is a server called this configuration server that has been created. This configuration server, the name itself says it, may, it is used to configure. So whenever you do a VMware and OVH file is downloaded, and an OVH file, with the help of that OVH file, we will create a virtual machine on your VMware host. And that virtual machine, which is on the VMware host, will be your configuration server, will get all the servers that is on the host, and with the help of which you will be able to create uh, 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 the, the, uh, the configuration for your Azure uh, virtual machines uh, DR. So what are the requirements for VMware? Uh, the vSphere uh, v5.1 and above is supported. And you need to uh, allow TCP IP, uh, TCP 443, 9443 to access your URL. And the replication bandwidth, uh, uh, it needs to be configured. It's the same. How to select a configuration server? So this is your configuration server. Uh, the machine, a machine will be downloaded and OVH file will be downloaded. You give a computer name. Uh, you will hear. So once the con configuration server is created, there will be a tool called as Azure Site Recovery inside the server pre-built. You need to run that. You need to give your Azure subscription user ID and password. And then you need to give a subscription name. You might have multiple subscription name, resource group and recovery service vault. Download and install for SQL and your configuration server is been created. And this is your configuration server. And then you will see this. Then on this is from the Azure. You will you need to add your configuration server. Then you will add the name of the new configuration server that you just created, and then done. 
So in VMware, the only thing different for VMware and the physical server is the configuration server and the process server that you will create. And your physical machine, uh, the same way on premises, uh, machine type will be physical. And then a VM agent. So this is an agent based download where an EVM agent is getting created. So this is not a configuration server. This is an agent based download where you see the agent is downloaded. You select physical machine and you give the name. The physical machine, the name, the IP address, the OS type, and you. So this is where, okay, this is an important slide that needs to be covered. This slide will show the replicating of physical service, irrespective of the physical service. What we have configured here, we have given an RPU of 16 minutes, recovery point retention of 24 hours, and app consistency snapshot of 60 minutes. Everything, every of this point is configurable. There is no single area which is not each and everything here you can configure based on your requirement so this is your infrastructure view for physical servers it can be physical or for vmware we have vmware center we have virtual machine ml2 on the vmware this is your configuration server it will go to the server configuration we go to site recovery and the storage configuration will go to the storage account that we create what are the types of failover we have test failover Plan failover and end plan failover. As we said, test failover is an isolated network in Azure and it keep the protected virtual machine online. There is no production impact. In plan failover, it uses the Azure network mapped with the production network, shut down the protected virtual machine which is on premises. There is no data loss. And in unplanned failover, as we discussed, as there is no connection between Azure and on-premises, there can be a potential data loss between when you are unplanning and what is your last retention point. Failback, it's a reverse process. Okay, one very, very, very important point. For physical machine, the on-premises machine can fail over very smoothly to Azure. But failback to the same physical machine is not supported. What do I mean by that? There is another question for traffic manager, which we will cover in a while. Uh, of course, we will cover in a while. So uh, physical machine, uh, let me tell you this. When you are failing over from on-premises to Azure, physical you can do. But Azure doesn't support failback from Azure to on-premises physical server. You need a VMware environment. To specify it a bit more, when you are failing over from on-premises to Azure, a physical machine, failover is possible, absolutely possible. But when you want to fail back from Azure to on-premises physical server, it is not supported. You need to fail back from a virtual machine on a VMware environment. To answer Rami's question, what is the use of traffic manager? Okay, let me give you an example. Imagine you have a website on on-premises, uh, name uh, web app or anything. Now, as an Azure, you will configure a DR for that website on Azure. And in the traffic manager, you will give priority one and priority two. You will add both the machines which is ac ac accessing your website. One is down, one is up. On premises is up, on Azure is down in the normal working situation. All the users will come to traffic manager. All the users will hit the traffic manager for load. Now, as the on premises environment is up, as the on premises environment is up, the traffic manager is very smart it will as the priority one is for on premises the machine will be the traffic will be routed to on premises imagine your on premises is down and you turned on azure azure website no changes need to be done on traffic manager the query will again go to the first site but as the first is down the traffic manager will automatically route the query to site 2 which is on azure and which will be up and running so this is the job of traffic manager to route the traffic based on an availability. I hope I'm clear. Yes, guys. So, okay. So, okay. So this is a fail back process. If you see a virtual machine, if you see uh, uh, the, so here uh, on Hyper-V uh, snapshot, you will see fa replication also you will see here and fail back replication also you will see here based on the machine and the network bandwidth that you have uh guys of course not a thank you there are a lot of other things that we need to do uh, I, I will sh i'll share my complete screen
Okay, so Rami, to address your second question, can the failover be automatic? Failover is, of course, in, in case of traffic manager is, see, starting the failover is not automatic. You need to go to Azure and start the virtual machine because if it, either on-premises is live or either Azure is live at the time. If both the sites are live, then it is not a DR. It's, an, it's a high availability. So once you turn on the Azure, then of course the failover with the help of traffic manager is automatic because in traffic manager you will give the traffic as one and two i mean priority one priority two as priority one is on premises is down it will go to priority two okay let me share my complete screen guys just give me one quick minute here i hope you are able to see my screen which is uh, okay, so I said I, I will I will uh, connect where I left from. So I said in deployment planning, I said yes, I have done it in case. Okay, the deployment planner for the assessment. I click on okay, and then this is an uh, we can't proceed from this onwards. Here is where I create a Hyper-V site. Once I create a Hyper-V site, I'll name test site. I I name it as test site. I clicked on okay. <laughs> If you can give it any random name, this is going to be the site on Azure. I mean, not the exact actual site. It, it, it is going to be the name which will be called. The next slide, once the site has been created, Hyper-V servers is an area where you need to pro uh, provide your server information. Okay, my site has been created successfully. Which is fine. I will go to all site. I will go to recovery service world. I will go to demo RG. I will go to site recovery. Repair infrastructure. I sorry, I need to do it again. On premises, Azure, Hyper V. No, okay. Deployment planner. Yes, I have done it. Or I can do it later as well. Hyper V site, test site is there. Now I'll create my Hyper V servers. Where I do a Hyper V servers, this is an area where you know you need to download and install a site recovery provider. This is an area. I will download this. So I need to download two things. One is the installer and one is uh, the key, the vault registration key. I will download, a machine will be created. I, I mean, uh, 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 an installer will be downloaded, a machine will be created. And be, I mean, an installer will be downloaded. I need to add a key there and then I can configure. If this was not a Hyper-V, if this was a VMware, then it would have been a different case. I will go to on-premises. I will go to Azure perform migration no i said vmware okay if this would have been a vmware again a planner has been done yes i have done it okay fine then this is a configuration server guys and this is where you download and an ovf template will be downloaded see i'm sure uh, you know that uh, this would be i mean a lot of download but you know unless and until you don't do a demo around it it will not be clear what I I have done so far is I have only cleared your uh, 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 concept of DR. I have only created cleared the concept of DR, but actual DR you'll only come to know once you do it in your lab. So I would recommend everyone uh, who have uh, not done DR or who don't have an Azure subscription yet, take a two hundred dollar subscription. You need to uh, enter your email address. You need to enter your credit card detail. Of course, the credit card detail, $1 will be charged. And after $200 or one month is exhausted, your credit card won't be charged. The subscription will be deactivated. You will receive an email that the subscription is getting deactivated. Do you want to renew it or how or, or, or not? If you don't renew it, then there is no charge. So I would highly recommend everyone. So normally, uh, things to remember here, uh, whenever you are doing a DR, uh, first of all, the very important thing, you need to run a deployment planner, which is going to be an assessment tool. Then, of course, it's a VMware or physical or Hyper-V. You need to configure the RPO. You need to configure the RTO. And then you need to configure your uh, DR as per your requirement. Uh, so, guys, uh, uh, I mean, uh, we are close to 50 minutes now since the time when we have started. I will I'll, I'll give around 10 minutes for our question and answer uh do you have any question and answers probably i will share the ppt with all of you uh once this has been done and if you have any specific requirement i will paste my email address in the chat window where you can reach me out for anything else 
okay guys i think uh, uh, we are done so thank you so much again and uh, i will uh, see you again thank